Several years ago, CH2M Hill completed transferring all of the pumpable liquids from the 149 single shell tanks to the 28 double shell tanks. Now we are focused on retrieving the sludges and solids left behind. To date, we have emptied five of these tanks, we are actively retrieving waste from three others, and are in the preliminary stages of preparing to retrieve waste from four more tanks. One of CH2M Hill's first innovative technologies was the adaptation of vacuum retrieval equipment from the petroleum industry to meet our unique needs. Vacuum retrieval is an articulated mast system with a vacuum head, vacuum pump, slurry vessel, and slurry transfer pumps. It uses high pressure, low volume water to dissolve and mobilize solid waste material, then draws it to the surface where it can be transferred to double shell storage. Another approach is modified sluicing. In tank S112, a 758,000 gallon tank built in 1950, we revamped the traditional sluicing technique for waste retrieval to get away from using large volumes of water at high pressure. We developed new equipment to reduce the amount of liquid and the pressure required to achieve retrieval. The system that once used a flow rate of 300 gallons per minute now uses just 100 gallons per minute. The pressure has been reduced from 300 PSI down to just 100 PSI. We also develop techniques that allow the use of recycled liquid waste or supernatants, thereby reducing the amount of water that has to be treated and stored. But one technology is often not enough to retrieve all of the waste. At the bottom of S112, for example, was a hardened layer that could not be retrieved using available technologies. Working with a Colorado-based small business, we developed a remote water lance that uses high-pressure, low-volume water to be inserted into the tank to break up the hardened layer. The tool, which we refer to as the salt mantis, is collapsible, allowing it to be lowered into the tank through a 12-inch riser. It then reopens and sprays water at 30,000 pounds per square inch pressure at a flow rate of just 6 gallons per minute. This tool has proven successful, and we are now sharing the technology for use at other nuclear waste sites. Continuing to explore and develop newer, more effective ways to conquer our waste retrieval challenges, enhance our safety, and cut the cost to taxpayers. Two new technologies hold great promise. One is the Rotary Viper, which is being tested at our state-of-the-art cold test facility. The Rotary Viper is a variable height, high pressure water system that enables operators to direct the spray in a specific location to break up waste and flush it toward the central pump. Where modified sluicing nozzles spray from a height well above the waste, the Rotary Viper can be lowered directly into the waste to help break it up and move it to the pump. It can also be used to keep the pump screen clean during retrieval. Another innovative technology being tested is the Sand Mantis, a mobile retrieval tool similar to the Salt Mantis. Built by the same Denver-based firm that developed the Salt Mantis, it combines the best features of the Salt Mantis with a new vacuum retrieval system and represents a cutting-edge approach to our retrieval challenges. The vacuum pump is inside the device, not up on the surface, and uses no moving parts. The entire device is hydraulically operated and there are no fickle components involved making it safe to operate in tanks where there's a potential for flammable gas to exist. The Sand Mantis is simple, reliable, and rugged, and will allow us to accelerate the final phase of waste retrieval. This technology is currently being studied and could be deployed by the end of 2006 if it proves viable against stubborn waste. As originally planned and designed, the waste treatment plant now under construction at Hanford will not be able to treat all of Hanford's tank waste. One or more supplemental treatment technologies will be necessary for DOE to meet its treatment and disposal commitments. To supplement the capabilities of the waste treatment plant, CH2M Hill is evaluating bulk vitrification to help expedite treatment of Hanford low activity tank waste. The supplemental treatment process has the potential to immobilize up to 25 million gallons of low activity waste for permanent disposal. Bulk vitrification mixes waste with Hanford's silica-rich soil in an insulated steel container 
Then electrifies the mixture with two large electrodes, heating the mixture to about 2400 degrees Fahrenheit, transforming it into a molten glass-like material. When cooled, it's more durable than natural volcanic obsidian. The hazardous materials are immobilized in the glass, and the entire container can be sent to a primitive disposal site. The technology was selected as the primary technology for pilot testing and demonstration after evaluating 22 different technologies. The recently completed design of our bulk vitrification pilot plant and testing of the technology is well underway. Testing has included lab tests, engineering scale tests, and full scale tests using soil, waste simulant, and actual tank waste. The next step of the process will require construction of a pilot plant. The designs of the various components have been reviewed by a panel of outside experts and their input is now being evaluated and integrated into the final design that will allow the pilot plant to go forward. Another supplemental treatment technology being explored by CH2M Hill is the use of fractional crystallization as a pretreatment technology to separate high activity and low activity waste for more efficient waste retrieval and processing. Fractional crystallization is a simple and proven industrial process applied to Hanford's tank waste. The process would dissolve solid tank waste, then through filtration and evaporation, separate the waste. Our team has recently installed equipment into a hot cell at our 222S laboratory to continue the research of fractional crystallization as a possible tank waste pretreatment technology. A successful pretreatment process, such as fractional crystallization, could help the site increase its capability for waste treatment and thus accelerate cleanup. The Office of River Protection has extended the offer to CH2M Hill to continue its cleanup mission for the next two years. CH2M Hill will continue to face technical and safety challenges and we will face them head on, devising new approaches and novel engineering solutions for technical, safety and logistical problems. Completion of retrieval in at least three tanks the start of retrieval and at least four more are expected during this time. We will continue to look for technologies that can meet or exceed regulated requirements for those tanks and will do our work safely. Testing will continue with our supplemental treatment technologies to lay the groundwork for future deployment. <laughs>